Greetings everyone! In today's video we will be going over the abilities of three of the current Awakeners in Fate Trigger, the Novita. For those of you who are unaware, Fate Trigger is an upcoming third-person, free-to-play hero-based anime battle royale game. The game was unveiled fairly recently and looks extremely promising. We did get an invite to their creator program, so if you guys would like to see more Fate Trigger content be sure to hit that like button. Drop a comment below and let me know if this looks interesting to you, or if it's another pass. My goal is to try to grab a couple alpha test keys to share with some lucky commenters so for a chance to win access. Share those thoughts below. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. I don't know the proper terms they will end up using for the character skills, so for now I will refer to them as passive, tactical, and ultimate. The first character we will be taking a look at is the Veiled Shadow, Huxley. If you've played other tactical-based shooters before, you will be very familiar with this type of character. Her tactical mark of rouge will scan the area and mark nearby target for her and her allies. In a game where map awareness can mean the difference between life and death, the ability to reveal enemy locations is no laughing matter. If she had scanned more than one enemy in that building, she likely would not have made that push. But knowing it was a single target and seeing said target's exact location made cleaning them up all too easy for her. After finishing off a downed enemy, her passive coup de grace will reveal the position of said enemy's nearby teammates, robbing them of any chance they had of a surprise attack. Her ultimate realm of mist will obscure the vision of enemies caught within the mist and grants her dead silence, allowing her to walk up on her target without a sound. My girl is your friendly neighborhood bloodhound, and I'm gonna call it right now. Pretty much every team you roll up on in this game will likely have a Huxley in it. Our next character plays more of a defensive role on the team and goes by the name Starhopper Kira. Her tactical halo shield allows her to create a holographic composite shield to make cover where there were no cover. The shield is made up of four parts, and each part can be destroyed separately. Allied fire can pass through the top part of the shield, and up to four shields can exist at any time. I wonder how difficult it's going to be to destroy the shield. Regardless, this is a very useful ability to have in one's back pocket. Her ultimate digital fortress allows her to summon a holographic two-story fortress, and the best part? She didn't even have to crank a 90 to do so. The fortress comes with four surrounding jump pads, allowing her and her allies to leap to the top floor. Each wall of the fortress can be destroyed separately. The fortress will automatically collapse if Kira is away from it for too long. And again, we have yet another top tier ability. You can use this to block lanes and of course to give you and your teammates the high ground. But we do have to wait and see how hard it's going to be to take this thing down when you're in the receiving end of it. If the enemy Kira leaves it for too long, it does collapse. So I suppose you could just disengage and bait her out of it. Oh, okay, so it gets worse. Her passive energy matrix states, when Kira is in her own digital fortress, she is protected by it. Digital fortress continuously restores its creator's source energy, which I'm assuming is HP and armor. So I'm just glad she does not appear to have a death note at this point. I wonder if when she is in her own digital fortress means there can be more than one Kira in a team or just to prevent an enemy Kira from leeching off a random fortress, whichever it is. I can definitely see her being another top tier character. Our final character for today's video is Petricor Flame Ziva. This character appears to be your standard assault type and could potentially be a counter to fortress camping Kiras. Her tactical Azure Divine infuses the ground with the Petrichor Flame, raising a firewall in front of her that blocks line of sight. Enemies who touch the wall will be burned and take damage over time. If you guys are familiar with Apex Legends, you likely thought of Catalyst the second the skill activated. Catalyst was a top tier pick in Apex tournaments because of her ability to so effectively block lanes. Of course, she could set up traps and stuff, but denying the enemy line of sight was one of the things that made her a top pick. So Ziva having that as her tactical is insane. Let's just hope it doesn't have a crazy long duration. As for her passive searing munitions, it infuses her incendiary rounds and incendiary chip with the Petrichor Flame. Incendiary rounds deal more damage and slow targets hit, and weapons equipped with incendiary chips also slow targets hit. So this is a very good ability to force enemies out of cover, or to temporarily block a lane and prevent a push. Of course, this should counter Kira because if this makes it into her fortress, the team have to bail or die to the dot. 
I can see this being a very oppressive ability in certain situations. Her ultimate Corvite Storm gathers Petrichor Flames and calls down a Firestorm at the targeted area, bombarding the area with fiery meteors for a short duration, and this is going to be your Bangalore and Gibby ult, and should be a good counter to Kira, depending on whether or not the enemies can tank it. Of course I don't know if this thing can cause friendly fire, so it's unsure if you can have your teammates push in while this is coming down on them, or if it will stun teammates like a Bang ult. It's hard to say for sure where she will fall in a tier list without damage numbers, and notice how she stay out of the skills range while it was active. This likely means she will take damage from her own ultimate. Her design is very cool and will likely appeal to your usual try hard sweat lords. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. There are four more characters left to go over. And for those wondering if this is just another waifu infested anime game, they do have at least one furry that appears to be male so we might get males at some point. Remember this game is only at its alpha stage and many things have not been revealed. Anyway, until we meet again, friends.